my works are in basically five pieces. There is the large center piece, and there are the four borders. So as I put it together, I start by piecing the set for the Baltimore album. On. These are separate squares that all get fastened together. I put them together and then add the borders on either side. So um, that's there. Um, let me say this, that um, I use from the outside, I don't know if you can notice over on that side, this outer rim, which is the backing here. This is, um, on this one, it's um, ancient hieroglyphics. Um, and that this is mud cloth from the continent of Africa. And I did the Egyptian hieroglyphics here, um, sort of taking the history all the way back, because a lot of our history does not tell us that Egypt is in Africa when you look at your history books. Um, they say dawning of civilization is ancient Rome and Greece. And, um, and then in the back of the book somewhere is Egypt, but they don't say Africa says Upper Sahara, something like that. But at any rate, I, this quilt moves like this. Borders, African mud cloth representing the mother country, Africa. So mother country, African mud cloth, going in the blue represents the middle passage, coming through the middle passage. The row of the line of safety pins or pins going all the way around is meant to symbolize the lingering pain of racial hatred and this pain of being pulled from your motherland, your homeland in slavery. And sometimes when I do this, show the quilts, I will leave some of the pins just open, but um, I usually now for the just safety of folks, not wanting them to be stuck, but this, when I started using this, um, it was very, very indicative of um, something that is a reoccurring theme in my current work. Okay, this, this idea of pins and pain. But this is for the pain of being pulled from your homeland in slavery. The red and black symbolizes the uh, lives that were lost in that passage. And then this rope here that goes around um, is a heavy um, sort of batting coil that I cover with Americana fabric, stars, stripes, flags, those kinds of things. And it's an idea that I appropriated from Faith Ringo. Oftentimes, she will put it on the outer edge of her quilt to help to stabilize it and so forth. But I wanted to use it in such a way to visually symbolize being pulled from your homeland in slavery and brought into this new world or this new land. And with the whole series, um, I've used various um, types of mud cloth and fabrics to represent the water and the people. This also changes, but for all the other quilts, and there, there are now seven in this series, um, instead of taking it just all the way around and leaving it, challenging um, slavery in Maryland, I brought these, this um, foil, coil down to form nooses, lynch knots at the bottom on either side. So um, it's like every time you look at it, if you spend some time, you see something more. So Heather just said, oh my gosh, I didn't even see that. I walk past it every day and I just I know, it's heavy, it's like, okay. So, um, and then as you move in, I use the railroad track fabric to symbolize, one, to honor the Underground Railroad, but also now to lay the foundation for sort of the basis of the story. And um, uh, on it and around the border are the names of the various counties here in Maryland. And I try to indicate uh, some of the history that's there or some factual information um, that uh, was involved with that particular county. Um, I put uh, samples of the Underground Railroad. Some of the symbols people said that um, slaves used um, quilts to uh, run away as symbols for run away. And it's an issue that is of great debate um, because it cannot be documented. And um, I, uh, I, um, one of the things I said is like, it's really interesting that in today's world, in order to prove that something happened, that it must be written down somewhere, which absolutely dis, 
um, takes out um, oral history in a way, but then when you stop and you think about it, everything was oral history, even the Bible. So at some point you have to say what really is the truth. But I kept it here because in some of the stories, there is some, you know, there's uh, references to quilts um, in the history, but nothing that can be definitively said as true. So, but my take on this is, can't you see that slave just before they're getting ready to run away? Stop in my tracks. I got to write this down so that it will be here in perpetuity. <laughs> Within that square, within the railroad square, what are the ranging dates of those written down quotes? Um, some of them, I don't know if they're all on, they're all within this period of about 1850 to 1865. Thank you. Okay. okay. So, um, the, um, so that's basically it. So, um, but I wanted to just um, sort of suggest, if you will, that there is some, the Underground Railroad was really important part of slavery in Maryland and um, included uh, quilt squares for that. And um, so and they each had their own particular meaning. Now as for the quilt itself, when you come around, we have the center square, which was the very first thing that I did. And um, the, here again, the African, the mud cloth representing the mother country and sort of replicating what's on the border, the water, the faces and the lives that are lost and you can see the slaves therein. From this are the corners, which anchor, and at this time, this particular flag became known as the sort of the Civil War flag. So um, with the um, album quilts, oftentimes they will use a replication or repeat a pattern in some way in the corners just to support. So what I did was to say, okay, this is a Civil War flag. Let me put in these corners how you get out of slavery. You can run away, over here you can just run away. You can be, um, be set free by will, a document of your master. You can be manumitted by your uh, uh, freedom, or you can join the military at the time. So that's those four corners. Outside of those corners, anchors why you would want to be free from slavery. And um, over here, the first one is you could be lynched. You could be whipped or beaten. That piece was a part of the collection uh, at Maryland Historical Society. Uh, this one shows, uh, is a painting that was also a part of the collection showing a white, a young white slave boy, I mean one slave owner, son, practicing his whipping skills on a black dog. So that was it. And then down here is the Naughty Nelly, which is the boot jack that um, was used, a uh, slave master would put his foot in the crotch and then use it as support to put his boots up. So those are the reasons, sort of to, some of the reasons to get out of slavery. So that was that. Um, the gold tassels across the bottom represent the wealth and the money that was made for slavery. As you move out then from the corners, I have the abolitionists. You know, here and here with their story. And um, as you then move out from that, um, are other stories that would support uh, challenging slavery in Maryland. Most of the Baltimore album quotes will have certain squares that, uh, you know, reoccur or reappear. One of them is a family tree, um, you'll see all times. And that's a, another thing that I use over and over again in some of my quilts. But for this one, in white letters, all white letters, are the titles or the names of positions that slaves held during that time. In the research, I went through and found all the jobs that they held for their white masters. But in the center, if you see, can you see what that is in the center? In black? Parents. parents. They were parents of all things, you know, in, in addition to all of that. And, um, it was free labor. This family tree became free labor. Um, let's see. Um, here I took the American flag, and with the balance, I've been um, inspired also by a quote from de Tocqueville, who was French. He came here to the United States to research 
um, the prison systems here. And Baltimore was one of the places he came, Philadelphia, D.C., Chicago, and all up the East Coast. But when he was here in Maryland, one of the quotes that he said, he was absolutely mystified, that he called this um, the strange, what a strange civilization Maryland is, with this new democracy, with um, you know the religion, um, with the wealth and the money, and then they had slavery here in Maryland. And because we were the low, you know, um, here was such a question. I took the flag and the Maryland state flag and just sort of divided it. I separated it out because of the okay, okay, and then on it is us on uh, the scales, there is a um, uh, a check, a picker's check here, mm -hmm. which represents, you know, how the slaves were paid at the time. And then over here, um, to keep this slavery in place, is all these other things that Tocqueville talked about, um, symbols for um, the church, the eagle, um, and um, what else, some money is on their bag of money as well. Um, here, uh, this square talks about the Emancipation Proclamation. And you can see I have, again, the Maryland flag sort of all over, but the stop sign on top of it. It's like, no, this isn't true, stop. The Emancipation Proclamation did not free the slaves in Maryland. The document reads, only those slaves are free in the named southern states in rebellion against the Union. Maryland was not in rebellion against the Union. So therefore, that law emancipation did not apply here in Maryland. And we had produce, we had tobacco, we had the seafood industries that demanded that free slave labor. So slavery in Maryland, you know, stayed around for 